Good morning, boys. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Boys, have you gone through the book which I sent you today morning? Anyone, man, have you gone through the book, man? Additive Manufacturing Technologies by Ian Gibson, David Rosen. Anyone, man? Reply me, boys. No, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Got it, sir, but I still haven't opened, sir. Okay, guys, uh, it is uh, one of the good book for additive manufacturing. Uh, it contain a lot of things uh, you may go through. Uh, I, I got this book uh, once I went for uh, a 10 day workshop on additive manufacturing. Uh, they are given this book. Uh, once I gone through, they are given uh, many details about additive manufacturing. Not only this, uh, more than this, there are a lot of things you need to learn. But uh, this is one of the basic things. Uh, you have to learn for additive manufacturing. Okay, it is one of the good book. Even if you want uh, any other data, also I can able to send you. Okay, um, even uh, I try to send the PPT, uh, but uh, yesterday and by today morning till now uh, the net is uh, very slow here in Gobi. It is totally down here. I am unable to send uh, even PPT. Uh, that is why till now I didn't send. Uh, or else uh, I may send you, as I said you earlier, I may send you yesterday itself, but uh, due to low, low speed, uh, I cannot send you. Uh, I will try. If possible, I will send by today itself. Okay. By Friday, uh, Friday or uh, before Monday, you show, you upload your notes. I will send you the uh, link also. Okay. Um, now we are uh, moving to unit number two. Uh, boys, anyone uh, gone through our... Uh, uh, you, you need one syllabus. Uh, have we left anything, man? Shall we move or uh, any anything to be discussed uh, in uh, unit number one, boys? You have to tell me. No, nope, sir. Can move to unit two, sir. Okay, okay, guys. Uh, unit two. Guys, unit 2, uh, it is an important unit compared to uh, all other units because here you are going to learn uh, all the technologies and its parameters. The important additive manufacturing technologies you are going to learn. Uh, the thing is uh, stereolithography, LOM, FTM, SLS, SLM, binder jet te technology. These are some of the uh, popular technologies used in additive manufacturing techniques. Okay. Uh, that is what you are going to see today. Uh, it is uh, important that you need to be attentive here. Because there are a lot of data are there, uh, but I have compressed and I have given you in some form. Uh, I am not focusing exactly for uh, exam, and to, uh, but for your knowledge I am focusing. Okay? I have given you many data. Uh, I don't know uh, how come they are asking an exam, because this is the first time the subject we are handling. Uh, how they are, the, how they are going to ask? I don't know, but I am focusing here for knowledge because this is one of your uh, uh, open elective. You have chosen for your knowledge, so I am giving you some additional data. Please uh, don't mind that I am uh, I am taking uh, or I am giving many data. So, okay, boys, just listen uh, listen what I am talking and uh, uh, how it relates uh, with the technology. You just uh, listen, okay, guys. Um, what you're going to learn here is what is SLA, how it works, what are the important characteristics, and uh, next one is how the uh, support structures varies in SLA. Uh, curling and layer addition are in, uh, some of the things which, uh, which is important in SLA. And uh, Once the process is over, uh, we have to do necessarily post-processing method in any additive manufacturing process we, have, we will do, and its benefit and limitations. See, once a yeah, designer knows its benefit and limitation only, they, you can use the technologies properly. So it is a necessary to learn, learn benefits and limitations. And finally, thumb rule. Thumb rule is for where to be used, how to be used. That is what uh, you're going to uh, 
uh, learn how this technology can be used effectively. Uh, that is what we are going to see at the last slide. Uh, these are the things you are going to learn today. Uh, you might be excited to learn. I think so, boys. Uh, first one, uh, what is SLA? Uh, might be this slide uh, you have seen earlier in unit number one. See, in unit number one, uh, while studying classification of uh, additive manufacturing, we have studied three types of classification. One is solid, second one is liquid, and third one is powder-based. So these are the three days we have seen. Uh, and the time itself, I have told you that just go through the slide while studying second unit, you will understand uh, how it has been completely classified. So this is the time you are going to learn here, we'll learn about this uh, complete slide. Uh, today we are going to see about the liquid materials. That means the input will be the liquid and it is classified again into two types. One is extrusion process and liquid polymerization. Here now I'm, I'm, I'm now we are going to learn about liquid polymerization. In that there are two processes, photo masking and la laser process. Uh, we are going to study about laser process and uh, the technique is stereolithography. This is what we are going to study today. Liquid material in that liquid polymerization using laser stereolithography. This is the thing you are going to learn today. Okay, boys. First thing is a stereolithography is an additive manufacturing process that belongs to VAT polymerization family. What do you mean by VAT polymerization? The thing is VAT polymerization is, uh, you know that the, what you mean by polymerization. Here, uh, here it belongs to VAT polymerization. VAT polymerization is nothing but you are going to use liquid polymer resin. Okay, uh, liquid polymer resin uh, and that liquid polymer resin you are going to uh, cure or harden using ultraviolet rays. Okay, using UV rays. And uh, this will be done in a layer by layer either in downwards or upwards. Here, uh, here I have mentioned here are downwards. It might it, it have two type of uh, thing you can do here, both upward and downward you can be do. Okay, it belongs to VAT polymerization. Uh, it means liquid polymerization you are going to use for uh, increasing the layer. Uh, it will be cured by using ultraviolet rays. It can done both upward and downward. downward. That is what called what VAT polymerization. Okay, guys. Uh, so I have clearly mentioned that you are going to use uh, ultraviolet rays and photosensitive thermoset polymers you are going to use. Okay, uh, this technology is not a new thing, man. It have uh, patented earlier, uh, earlier, that means 1986, which is my uh, date of uh, birth year, 1986, uh, it have been patented. Uh, but even now it is one of the popular technology because of the... Uh, because of the material can be built faster. That is why it is still now it have been uh, used in uh, many industries. Okay, guys. Second one, uh, I'm sorry. Next thing is um, not only faster, it have good accuracy. And also you'll get smooth surface finished, uh, which is uh, important for a uh, 3D printing technology. Um, in last unit, I have told you or else I have shown you example of a cup. Uh, how a cup of 3D model will be, a uh, CAD model will be, and while on uh, while on 3D printing, how it have been changed. Since it would have been uh, printed in a layer by layer, the surface finish might be lesser compared to other technologies. But here, the technology what you are using, it improves the surface finish. It is most important, the 3D printing technology. Um, it doesn't mean that it, it, it don't need any post processing, but even after you you need to have uh, coloring also. Okay, so it must need a pro post processing method. Um, uh, next thing is uh, uh, it can compare with the direct light processing. It can compare the same technology can be compared with direct light processing because uh, as I told you, that polymerization is nothing but uh, you are going to cure or hard on using uh, ultraviolet rays. So direct light processing is nothing but you are going to 
cured uh, directly with the help of light. So they just comparing this wet uh, polymerization and direct light processing, uh, and simply you can say both are same or both are equal. Okay, how does it works? As I told you, uh, boys, uh, I am um, giving data. Uh, you just keep on listening. Once the diagram comes, you will understand clearly. Okay, uh, it will easy to understand when you see the diagram. You just listen what I am saying. Okay, how it works? Okay. Uh, the thing is, or else we will go to diagram directly. Okay, this is the uh, this is the process, or uh, this is how the uh, cat process. I'm sorry, this is how the SLA process will be. As in three uh, three D printing, what you are going to do is you have to make a cat data. Once you have a cat data, that data will be stored in a STL format. So STL format, what it will do, boys? It will slice to do as many number of layers it possible. So it will be sliced. So here you have, to, you have to note it down. Here they mention S1, S2, SN. S1 means uh, slice number one, slice number two, and up to n. Okay. Here the thickness they have mentioned. Slice thickness. A individual slice thickness will be mentioned as a D. Each and every size will have a same thickness, so they have mentioned here as a D. Okay, see here, see here. This is a diagram for understanding. I'll show you again the full diagram. It will be similar. Uh, see, the next step is um, the uh, working process. It is called elevator. I will mention here as a E, and this one is called bed. Okay. So using elevator, the bed will moves downward, even moves up and down. Okay. So what I am told you, oh, I am sorry. What I have told you earlier is uh, while on explaining wet polymerization, I told you that uh, it it will move downwards. Yeah. Yes. This is a process. I'm what I'm showing you is it moves downwards. See uh, this elevator and bed moves in a tank which contains a polymer resin. See, this is nothing but polymer resin in a liquid form. Uh, this uh, bed is immersed in the immersed in the uh, liquid resin. Okay, if the uh, immersion of the uh, bed or platform is depends upon the thickness of the slice. Thickness of the slice here they are mentioned as a D. So once it have immersed depends upon the slice thickness, then what happens is Using a um, using light source, I'm sorry. Using UV light with the help of mirror, depending upon the shape, it will be uh, cured over the arrows. The UV light will be passed over the surface of this surface of this liquid surface of the liquid. So what happens means that surface will be cured. So once cured, what happens is this elevator will move downwards. How much it will move depends upon the D, because uh, S two also will have a same thickness, so it will be re the process will be repeated until it reaches the slice th the slice of uh, n number. So once it reaches the final process, we will get. So this is what the stereolithographic process is. Okay, guys. So now we'll come here. See, uh, the built platform is first positioned in the tank of liquid polymer. At a distance of one layer height for the surface of the liquid, as I told you, uh, the platform, the, this platform or uh, this bed will be immersed, depending upon depends upon the thickness. Okay, uh, then uh, you will as a create the next layer by selectively curing and solidifying the photopolymerism. So uh, there might be the, our product might be in a different shape, but with the help of mirror, we will make the UV uh, UV light to uh, flow on the shape of the uh, depends upon the shape of the product in the UV laser will flow on the surface of the uh, resin depends upon the shape. So what happens to me is uh, because of UV light flows over the surface of the uh, liquid, it will be cured. Okay. Once it are cured, the elevator will move down again the, uh, according to the size of T. Okay. The laser beam is focused in the predetermined path using a set of mirrors called Galvos. So Galvos means Pre moving in a predetermined path of us with the help of set of mirrors by 
less the pain. Okay, the whole cross-sectional area of model is scanned so that produced part fully. Um, next thing is uh, you have to note an important point here. Uh, the sweeper blade, the sweeper blade recos the surface. It will happen only in the downwards. For upward, it will now it won't happen. So you have to show the difference. Uh, while writing, you have to show the difference. The sweeper blade will be there. Will once the uh, slice thickness of the first layer have completed, there will be an uh, sweeper blade. It will just move over, move over the surface to have a, a small layer of coating. Okay, uh, this will be repeated. One, this will be repeated up to the uh, slice of thickness n will n up to n. Okay. Uh, once the process is over, uh, we can say that the uh, the part is uh, might be an uh, half completed, or else, and I am not half completed, ninety percent is completed because the part might not be completely cured. Since this liquid polymer belongs to um, photosensitive characteristics. Even after you have uh, uh, taken that um, product from the printing machine and kept it outside, it will get cured. So if the, uh, the curing is a continuous process. While removing from the machine, we can say that uh, it is in a green form. Okay, it is in a green raw 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 product. Okay, uh, raw product, and also I have to note it down that um, it need further post processing under. You will light. Why we need uh, we need post processing is it is half cured so that to improve the mechanical properties and thermal properties we need to be cured. Okay, guys. Um, once uh, it have been cured, what what going to happen is there will be an unbreakable bonds will be formed in the polymers. The monomers will join together and will make a complete polymer, and it will finally lead to an unbreakable bond. Uh, hence, this is called photopolymerization, and here, here you are using uh, liquid polymer. Hence, it is called vat polymerization. And um, the notable is it is completely irreversible. Why? Because if you heat the finished product, it won't uh, reverse and go back go, go back to liquid form. Instead, it will burn. It will burn and it will melt. Okay, it is completely irreversible process. Using liquid resin, it is an irreversible process. Okay, since it is an irreversible process, we can say that we are using thermoset polymers or plastics, not thermoplastics. Okay, guys. So well, this is a diagram uh, you can understand in a better way. See here, uh, this is the. Uh, elevator, we can say it as an elevator or movable build platform. It is nothing but XY scanning, it will move in XY direction, and it is nothing but laser source. It is a resin tank. Okay, uh, the blue color what shows is a UV curable resin, and a dark blue shows that cured layer. Once the layer is cured, this elevator moves down 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 depends upon the each layer thickness and finally a material will be formed a product will be formed this is how it will works so what is the characteristics of sla um, most of the uh, parameters uh, here uh, are fixed in the fixed by the manufacturer itself because um, uh, the work here you are, what you are going to you do here is you just convert into a STL file, and the file should be transferred properly. That's it. Uh, here, uh, layer height will be changed depends upon the complex of the product. That's it. Nothing other going to be changed. So only these things you are going to control here. Other than that, nothing you are going to control here. The uh, uh, typical layer height in SLA range between 25 to 100 microns. Uh, you can you can set between 25 to 100, but this uh, layer height might be changed depends upon the uh, type of machine what you are going to use because there are a lot of development in the SLA method. Uh, so uh, even uh, 25 to 100 microns can be changed depends upon the um, type of machines. Okay, uh, when you when you have a curved geometries. Also, you can get accurately uh, because of the 
uh, maintaining the layer height but when you are having uh, least layer height it will take lot of time for building and it, it will cost more okay uh, as i told you earlier and there are two main uh, sla setups are there two main sla setups are there one is uh, two main process two uh, you can subdivide into two you can say uh, top down orientation and bottom up orientation that thing is nothing but the platform can be moved from top to bottom that is called top down orientation and reversibly from bottom to top you can be moved that is called bottom up orientation okay uh, how it differs is uh, the top down sla printer place the laser source above the tank and of course opposite of the bottom up in bottom up tank the uh, the laser source will be bottom of the tank so uh, this is how it will be so this is the schematic of a top down sla printer here this is the tank in that it is a platform or bread it is this one is nothing but first layer and the platform have moved to second distance uh, second uh, time with the thickness of the layer so this is how happens this is what called top from top to it is moving down it is called top down sla printer so uncured resin they have mentioned here built platform first layer of a cured resin and gap of uncured resin about to be cured so this is what they have mentioned here this process is called top down sla process or orientation so next one is bottom up sla printers place slice source under the resin tank as i told you earlier and the important thing you have to note down is how this is possible so this is possible with the help of uh, in a bottom there will be a silicon coating will be there that allows the light layer a light of laser to pass through but stops the cured resin from sticking to it how this is possible is uh, in bottom of the tank there will be a silicon coating once it have once the slice s1 have cured the elevator with the help of elevator the platform will be moved up the platform will be moved up this stops that cured resin from sticking to it okay that's how it, it happens uh, after every layer the cured resin is detached from the bottom of the tank as the platform moves upward that is called peeling step uh, since it is moving upward that step is called peeling step peeling is nothing but removing or if you remove a skin of a orange what will called with the help of uh, peeler if you remove a skin of a um, apple uh, with the help of a peeler nothing in that, that is nothing but it is used to remove the skin so it is nothing but removing the uh, finished product or cured product from the liquid hence it is called peeling step okay guys uh, this is how it will works so the same thing happening from the bottom bottom to uncured build platform first layer of a cured resin gap of uncured resin so here is what the silicon uh, coating will be okay guys actually uh, this q this resin won't be in uh, such a height it will be in a uh, just required height okay not uh, so much not in a full tank it will be lesser compared to the uh, top to bottom okay so uh, from which you can understand easily this diagram will make you to understand easily of bottom up sla printer see laser uh, laser uh, source mirror here the liquid is once the process is over it is keep on the elevator uh, elevator is keep on moving up and finally the product will be so this is how it will be boys okay uh, let us see the advantage and uh, disadvantage of uh, uh, sla uh, for uh, bottom up lower cost while i will this lower cost because of the material how we are using material is liquid resin how much we are using is lesser compared to the uh, top down okay widely available means easily available not, uh, nothing more than that uh, very large built up size uh, yes of course why because uh, because of uh, the the orientation of working here that is what the very large build size is possible here and faster build up time since your building size is more and of course faster building time will be i uh, hear uh, small build size as i told you the process because of the deliver smaller build size and smaller material range requires more post processing due to extensive use of support uh, since your uh, your the process reverse of course you need, you need a 
support here also you need support but comparably you need more support in the bottom up that's why it is one of the good method compared to bottom up uh, request specialist after both request uh, specialist operator man i think uh, in that especially uh, changing material was emptying the whole tank that is an important negative here since um, from uh, top to bottom uh, depending upon the whole size of the material you need to fill the tank but here the required material can be filled so from which it will but in bottom of the required material can be filled from that it can be moved from bottom to top but uh, for the top to down you need to fill depending upon the size of the uh, product what you are going to make that is why uh, involving in material is more and from comparing that it needs a and uh, need to um, empty the uh, tank while changing the material okay support structure um, support structure is of course you know that in 3d printing or any type of process you need support structure there is no um, other mind in that uh, from top to down as i told you earlier you need um, yeah lesser support compared to uh, bottom down so see here uh, for uh, for the same thing you are you are making a usual support here but here in bottom up see the support structure is different because uh, when you are uh, reducing your uh, size of your product while while uh, height of while height of the elevator is increasing and reducing the size the size of your uh, product it is typical process in uh, bottom to top so that to have to avoid such uh, complications they have uh, changed the structure here that is why the process is like this so hence uh, here you need more structure the same thing can be done but it is complicated uh, might be lesser strength that is why we are changed the structure here and i mean uh, structure of uh, support here okay uh, curling as i told you curling is nothing but um, from the first time i have already told that this is belongs to photo resin material so while removing from the uh, machine it won't be cured completely it have to be again post process with the help of uv light so uh, we can say that it is uh, half cured while on curing again in post processing there might be a chance for shrinkage so while on uh, shrinkage uh, while on solidification shrinkage happens what will happen, what will uh, what will be the negative part of it there will be a change in dimension change in structure uh, lesser in uh, mechanical properties that is what the uh, curling is a big problem here you have to be take care of that you have to design accordingly while making in a sla okay next one is layer addition layer addition what the thing you have to keep in mind here is since you are making a layer by layer with the help of laser so uh, the since uh, from a layer to next layer the size might be varies the dimension might be varies the angle might be varies so you have to be very careful from uh, going from the layer, layer to the next layer so you have to be keep in mind okay uh, a change in high angle might be uh, lesser fused so you have to be take care of that okay boys uh, to uh, to achieve that uh, you, to achieve some complications in a great manner uh, you have to design accordingly and you have to do a post process accordingly so that you can uh, able to reach the required shape with the help of uh, this uh, change in structure okay guys um you can go through some common sla materials are standard resin clear resin uh castable resin tough for durable resin high temperature resin dental resin rubber like resin so these are the type of uh, photo for photo polymer resins available here see green is nothing but it's positive and red is nothing but it is negative standard resin will have a very smooth surface finish but it is brittle uh, while on uh, post processing it will be brittle man you have to be very careful using the standard resin 
next one is clear resin clear resin uh, is and another name might be a transparent material okay uh, re require require post processing for a very clear finish as you are going for a transparent material as you are going for a transparent material because of its uh, uh, transparent characteristics so of course it need a very clear post processing method to achieve a clear or a transparent uh, transparent uh, surface okay next one is castable it is for most the mold pattern and low as percentage after burn out okay burn out means um, what they are talking about is um, uh, once you do uh, once you do um, a burning process uh, yeah for unwanted material once you do a burning process it doesn't contain ashes so what happens is the polymer strength will be more here the polymer strength will be more that is why uh, when the wherever you need a high strength material they will go for a uh, castable uh, resin next one is uh, tough or durable uh, tough or durable means as you uh, studied already abs and pp like uh, material mechanical properties but uh, of course uh, abs and pp have low thermal resistance uh, high temperature resistance uh, resins are also available uh we can use uh, according to the need needed uh, needed areas next one is dental resin uh, here dental resin is uh, biocompatible uh, since we are using in uh, the resin in our uh, mouth it is biocompatible uh, high abrasion resistance but it, it cost is more uh, when you compare to the process what we are using right now in dental um with the with 3d printing sla process the cost will be more okay uh, because of the the material what you are using i will tell you how much the material will cost you from that you will understand how much it will be cost from compared to the ordinary process in dental and this type of process in dental next one rubber like resin uh, is rubber rubber like and also low dimensional accuracy yes uh, if you have rubber like material there will be a uh, less dimensional like accuracy that everyone knows post processing yes yes the sla parts can be finished to a very high standard using various post processing methods such as sanding polishing spray coating and finishing with a mineral oil um of course uh, you need to cure with the help of uh, uv light after that uh, you have to do a uh, polishing uh, if you want uh, you, you can paint or you can coat you can you have to do the post processing okay and now we will see the benefits see um benefits uh, as we have uh, seen many slides you may know that what are the benefits and limitations uh, but i will explain you sla can produce parts with very high dimensional accuracy with intricate details uh, in first unit itself while comparing additive and conventional uh, manufacturing process SLA will win easily in the making of intricate shapes, or else SLA, uh, or else uh, additive manufacturing is specially for making a complicated shapes. Hence, it can make a uh, intricate shapes with very exact dimension accuracy. That is its benefits. Mm, uh, SLA have a very smooth surface finish since we are using a photo resin. Surely, or uh, you must. you always get a very smooth surface finish okay uh, next one is uh, materials photo uh, polymers are uh, easily available easily available that is why uh, the material uh, can be get easily okay the next thing is sla parts are generally brittle and not suitable for functional parts yes boys um, i will show you an example here see this slide i'll show you while the uh, while the product have removed from the machine the strength will be differs after it have been after it have been cured the strength will be differs see the strength will differs its uh, tensile strength will be reduced and brittleness will be increased finally the hardness of the material will be increased so that's why what here they are saying is sla sla are generally brittle while removing from the machine once the process is over the material might be little bit tensile 
when you remove and you do a post processing uh, the material will be hardened well cured well and become hardened and it won't be suitable for functional prototypes this type of process mostly used uh, for a prototype but it cannot be used in functional prototype uh, the mechanical properties and visual appearance of SLA will degrade over time which parts are exposed to sunlight it cannot be used in sunlight because uh, it is a uh, photosensitive uh, you have to avoid using in uh, sunlight uh, because the properties might be degraded uh, support structures uh, are always needed it is one of the major disadvantage of a uh, additive manufacturing itself so this process also need a uh, structure okay uh, while removing uh, you may see a uh, visual marks will be over the surface since this is a um, this type of resins are very soft and uh, might be brittle when you remove there will be marks you cannot get a complete uh, complete finishing if you want to do that you have to spend more time or more cost on a finishing process so next one is uh, SLA guidelines so what is this is what material you are going to use is photopolymer and dimensional accuracy will be point I'm sorry, plus or minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.15 you will get. Okay, this is how maximum you will get. Uh, build size, 145 into 145 into 175 mm. Uh, maximum up to 150 into or 750 into 50. This is, this, is, this, is, this thing you can achieve easily. Even smaller you can achieve, um, but uh, that might be for uh, showcase. If um, normally the yeah, prototype may, may, might be in uh, should be in a handy manner to to cast that. So minimum it will be 145 into 145 and uh, 175 the build size will be. Common layer thickness uh, 25 to 100 microns that you can uh, manage and even depends upon the type of machine and the size of machine it might vary but in general it will be between 25 to 100 microns. Uh, support of course it always needed even for uh, top to bottom or bottom to top bottom to top you need uh, uh, very proper and uh, accurate support to get a good product tools of thumb or thumb rule where it can be used where this can be used is uh, sla is best suited for producing visual prototypes with very smooth surface and very fine details as I told you, this is not a function used for functional prototype. It can be used as a visual prototypes. Okay, it can be used as a visual prototype. Okay, you can use only for visual, but you can get a very fine detail that is possible here. Okay, uh, desktop SLA is uh, ideal for manufacturing small injection model like pass at affordable price. Uh, desktop SLA means uh, the size of the machine they are talking about. Uh, when you have a, such a SLA machine, it can be um, comparing with the general injection molding uh, process. Uh, it can the, the cost might be a uh, not big difference while using a desktop SLA and injection molding. Uh, you can choose uh, anything. Okay, it depends upon the part you are going to do and how many parts you are going to make. That is an important thing. Okay, uh, here also you can make uh, not only a single part; you can make a many number of parts in a single process itself. But uh, uh, please use the support accordingly. Okay, uh, industrial SLA machine can produce very large parts. Maximum it can possibly is one five double thousand five hundred into seven fifty into five hundred mm. The, that is what possible here. Okay, guys. Uh, so this is what uh, the uh, SLA is about. This is what SLA is about. Uh, boys, boys, are, are you listening, boys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Boys, if you have any doubt, please ask me, boys. I have taken the attendance. Today, the number is 43. Uh, do you have any doubt? You may ask me, man. It's a time for asking doubt. Uh, as I know, the um, I have gone through many slides today. 
and even i have not keeping test today because uh, even you have just two or three minutes to get from this class uh, so if you have any doubt you may ask me guys any doubts i am talking for very long time more than 30 minutes i am continuously talking and uh, do you have any doubts you may ask man if I, if you want to repeat also i may repeat the whole thing guys reply me boys no one is replying me boys are you there sir uh, no doubt sir uh, yes sir Sir. Yes, please. Then now, sir, please ask me the doubt. Sir, no doubt, sir. sir but when the fast car for me is dangerous, sir. Like, you know, ride when you are going to come out. Sir, yes, sir. Ah, uh, man, sir, sir, rombo slide fast car for example. Note side, come to link, sir. Slide, sir. Okay, okay. But what I will do is, I will repeat once again tomorrow the same topic. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir, note side, come to one minute time, come to sir. Okay, boys. Okay, okay. Uh, I will go slowly. Uh, what I thought is, if you complete a one technique for uh, in a one class, it will be um, it will be easy to understand. If I skip for next class, uh, you might forget. That is why I have gone. I have gone fastly because tomorrow we don't have class, and again we have class on Wednesday, the Thursday. Uh, might be on Thursday. We'll go slowly, and I'll give time for uh, writing also. Okay, boys. Okay. Um, any any doubts, man? No sir. Okay. No sir. Uh, okay. Then what I'll do is I will repeat the same thing again on uh, Thursday. If you have any doubts, you may ask also. Okay, guys. You just you have two minutes. Once we have completed our class on Thursday, we have test. Today there is no test for you guys. Okay, okay. sir. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thank you for listening, guys. Uh, you may leave. Okay, sir. Thank you, 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 sir.